All righty. It's five o'clock p.m. on Thursday, February 29th at the Middlesex Town Hall. Um, we are calling the meeting to order and welcoming guests and the explanation of this informational hearing. The select board is holding per 17 BSA statute 2680H2A, which states, quote, the hearing on a public question shall be held within the 10 days preceding the meeting at which the Australian ballot system is to be used. The legislative body shall be responsible for the administration of this hearing, including the preparation of minutes. Um, no action will be taken at this hearing. And this is regarding Article 7, um, which is, shall the town of Middlesex voters authorize the select board to purchase a new excavator in an amount not to exceed $200,000 to be financed over a period not to exceed 15 years, 24 VSA, statute 1786AC, to be voted by Australian ballot. So, is there any information that anyone here would like to share about this article, about the excavator? Okay, are there any questions about this? article from any guests we have a couple of guests online i don't know who mj is <clears throat> it's just michelle oh okay yeah. there we go <laughs> welcome michelle hi michelle Michelle's okay hi michelle sorry i didn't know who you were <laughs> you're not just michelle you're michelle okay um Fair and enough. <laughs> Uh, let's see, explanation of article by Select Board Road Former Commissioner. So you're just explaining that when it's a certain amount of money, it has to be an article. Yeah. And exactly. um, it has to be the amount of time, oh, the amount of time amount. that you're borrowing. And the amount of time that you're borrowing. Okay. So, and could someone just clarify for the record that if this article were to be approved, it would be purchased in fiscal year 25, July 1, after July 1, and not financed till the following year? Does anyone know? We would, I, I, I'm just curious. That would be ideal, but I, I don't think we can make it through it. I, uh, oh, you have to purchase it now. Our excavator now is it's, uh, on the brink of no longer. Okay. So this is for an Which excavator to be purchased yeah. before July 1, but funded or something else. We'll start a year from point of purchase. A year from point of purchase. That's okay. Correct. Well, Typically we start paying the, the you note. You pay a year from the time you do it. So we, it, it was not, so yes, yeah, so we would have to, um, if we buy it after July 1, the payment wouldn't come through until 2026. But if you buy it, it'll come through in the our budget year 25, if we buy it before July 1. Okay, which is the plan is to buy it before July 1, or at least... I would, it'd be nice if we could. Uh, okay. The, the reason we had to rent one last fall was because this one was <clears throat> not... Right, okay. So... We're not, we're not, we're just financing it and that the financing, if it's before July 1, would begin in this next year, this next fiscal yeah, year. Yeah, it's, the payment comes due one year from the date okay. that you So that would be within this fiscal year. Yeah, the next when fiscal When you year. take out okay. the loan. All righty. Any other questions? Just, Eric, if you could just, it was a long time ago, we talked about this, a relatively long time ago. Um... And I know we're not making a decision today about what excavator we're going to buy. We did have some discussion about what size, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do we still think, I mean, so I'm, so I'm just interested in knowing any update on that. And also, uh, as far as we know, we think the trade-in of our old excavator will be okay. I mean, not great, but okay. Correct. Um, depending on which route we do, the trade-in varies um, between thirty and forty thousand uh, dollars. Depending on the machine and which which brand, um, I think Vic and I've talked, and I think we've both decided that the bigger of the two would be a better option for us. 
and the longevity of it. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at with that. Can you talk about that song? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, we were looking at uh, the pretty much the equivalent size to what we have now. I think okay. what I found with the, with the, renting the smaller one, it was very difficult pulling stone out of the back of a tandem dump truck. I think it would take way, it just slows the process down way too much. That's my personal feeling. And we, and we are comfortable, as comfortable as we can be, that between the trade-in and the 200000 that price is still a good price, we'd be okay? Yeah, that's actually more than, I think it's going to be more than what we need. But I wanted a buffer. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a question, Randy? Yeah, I was just. You mentioned that you were looking at a couple. Yep. Um, uh, one brands. is brands. Uh, uh, Case. Uh, uh, Cabelco. Cabelco. Yeah, it's Kamatsu. Kamatsu. yeah. or it's Kamatsu. Kamatsu. And from Anderson, anyway. That's right here. Yes. I just Case C A S E. Yeah. And Belco, like the company. It's not a Cavalco. They don't have it's oh, no, Cavalco. It's, a, uh, a Cavalco. Uh, it's just a case. Just a case. case and Where yeah. the confusion comes from, sir, is that the dealer that sells a case used to sell Cavalco, but they don't sell yeah. Cavalcos anymore because I don't know why they're so not making it. No. So yeah. just forget the Cavalco. Just yeah. Forget the Cavalco. Yeah. <clears throat> case or a Komatsu is the other other one we were considering. Case or yes. Um, just a question. Are you going to be at town meeting? Yep. Okay. And you are too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, just in case someone wants to go into details yeah. about the excavator and has questions, it will be an article. Okay. You had a question? And this excavator will be able to be transported yes. by our newly acquired yes. trailer, right? Correct. Mm. Good. Okay, Vic, you had a question or comment? No. No? Okay. I do. Oh, yes. Um, so I, I was under this understanding that this wasn't going to be purchased before July 1. And therefore, there is no money budgeted mm -hmm. for the payment in the next year's budget. Um, but doesn't this actually if it passes doesn't it gives this you permission gives us to the money? buy it but it doesn't put the money in the budget oh i thought it did no no not the payment because the budget the budget's already developed that we're asking them to uh, well but n but the sixty five thousand for the town hall isn't in the budget that gets added if it gets passed the way the special but that article is, that is part oh of but it is in the budget you're right it is a part of it if it but if it doesn't it gets taken out of the budget right We're so sure don't we that. take some money out of our new capital fund to pay for this capital which is not fund. included in the budget that, i mean yeah. we've, we've talked about a couple I mean, of different talking. we've talked about a couple of different things and it was thrown on the arpa list the the capital asset inventory uh or that fund has some money um, in it, I don't know as if it's been talked about it expressly pulling from that as down payment for this or future purpose purchases, but um, yeah, I don't think we've had that level of conversation that I remember as of yet. Could I ask a question, Dorinda? <laughs> when you buy a piece of equipment like through Community Bank, for example, mm -hmm. it goes to purchase the equipment right it doesn't right. it doesn't go to like refund us for purchasing no the equipment. It, it, so we right. use that to pay for it when it comes. right because that's the collateral sort of right <laughs> yeah right. yes well, I'm just checking no uh, can, would we be allowed to uh, like we did uh, on the grader we got the grader like a month or so early and but we didn't pay on it until the well, they didn't bill us until after July 1. If we make that arrangement, is it? Let me yeah, rephrase the, that. I don't care how, I mean, let me speak. I, it does not matter as a general rule, but, you know, we didn't, but normally you would budget the payment, you know, because we'd right. have a budget 
mm -hmm. you know, a payment due mm -hmm. within the physical year 25. So um, in this case, it would be ideal if you could, um, if you could have them bill you. Right. I don't know how soon you'd take possession of it. Well, it, it, just, it, it will be a discussion. So it's a, we'll have to have a discussion. Negotiation as yeah. part of the sales. Yeah. I bet they do that. I bet they do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but One, the other way, and again, you know, there's creative financing as far as if you, you know, maybe borrowed from here to and put right. the money okay. back or something like that. I, again, um, I just wasn't, when we were doing this, I wasn't under the impression it was being purchased before okay. July 1. Well, I don't think we made it clear. I have, yeah. Okay. I think we talked about getting one, but I don't think we ever yeah. talked no, about an actual And this, really does, this article only allows us to purchase it. It doesn't actually put money in the budget for the first payment. Gotcha. Right. And you can, um, and it doesn't, if this gets approved, it doesn't mean you have to purchase it. Right, 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 yeah. It's gotcha. just giving you, All right. and that's why we put it into this warning so at least there would be something in place. Great job. Um, okay, so oh, ask, uh, go ahead, ask we a question. To, if we were to order that excavator next month, when would we be likely to receive it? Is it like trucks where it's no. three months later? No, it would only, it would be a short time, month or so. Okay. So we're in March. They might even have it. April. They might even have it coming in. They could. could okay. Possible. So we don't have the money. We and you would. And how much does it cost after a trade in? Well, Just an example, a theoretical now. This old. <laughs> I have no idea how much a trade in is. So probably so in the neighborhood of one. I'm just trying to think out loud here. So suppose we just agreed or plan or whatever the right word is and tell me if this passes month or Dorinda that we would take the first payment out of our capital fund it's a possibility yeah i mean i guess it's i don't know who manages the capital fund who decides you know when that was something that was assigned to the budget committee so is it it's all town money but who they were saving it for a different purpose, I think, weren't they? It's or no. It's not it's not set aside for a specific purpose, right. but it is or for a specific purchase. Sorry, not purpose. Um, it is designed to offset the purchase of right. any offset. large piece of equipment or truck. I think the thing that the select board needs to think about as we determine how we pay for it, what pot of money we pull from for down payments or anything else is what else is coming down the line and I know that we have trucks in multiple years coming up and how we yep. you know how we do that um, so I mean I we're not here to figure out well, how we and allocate money pass, for it today right. but um, it is absolutely okay. a conversation that we need to have so in hindsight, though, just thinking about this, because I, I just want to get clarity, uh, in the budget, the 65000 was put as a line item. Well, it's a, that's something you're going to be paying all in one year. So yes, it's just like... It, but it's in our budget. It, it's there. This yeah. is something completely different yeah. because you're financing it over 15 years. Yeah. So we haven't necessarily... Right. We're not going to pay the $200,000. Right, right, right. No, year. I know. Yeah. Where you know, um, so but it might be twenty five thousand or thirty thousand. Right. We did not. We did we not, did not put it in. We did right. not budget for it. Okay. Alrighty. So, are there any other questions from attendees? I think the only other question that I have, and we're not there yet, as far as like selecting a a, a place to purchase from or whatnot. But I uh, just want to make sure we think about you know serviceability and and you know um the customer service that we mm -hmm. get you know with with some of the things that have happened with oh, trucks i just yes. want to make sure that that's on top of our scoring sheet oh, for who we purchase this from Very and training so. the appropriate staff to handle also, it efficiently i would also suggest right along that line randy that if an extended warranty is available 
we can consider taking that extended warranty. The warranty, and if they come out, do they charge you to work on it, even though it's under warranty, is all a factor. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been we've been burned lately on our trucks, and it's frustrating. Uh, yeah. Well, we're not going to be. Okay. Any other questions about the Article Seven? Um, I yes. Was, I was running around doing stuff. Did you did did you guys discuss whether or not your finances before July? You're going to take this before July first or after July first? We're not deciding that at today's meeting. TBD. We're just discussing the article. It's a TBD. Yeah. TBD. All right, great. We'll, we'll see if it even passes first. Yeah. Yeah. It will. One step at a time. Okay. Um, however, I will, one more thing before we adjourn. Um, is there uh, an estimate, Dorinda, like of what the interest rate would be on this so we could? If someone asks, what would the payment be on a monthly, I mean, on a yearly basis? What well, is the interest we've rate? We've gotten very favorable interest rates up until the last couple of years. Yeah. I just, I inquired, the last one I inquired about, it was, they're looking at it 6%. 6%? Six percent. Yeah. Woo! That was. Holy moly. And that's something that probably. Most of these places have financing themselves, and it, the rates are dropping back again at the bank. So I can it may. Always ask around. Well, just ask yeah. about. I mean, the bank is. We can deal with all the bank financing. You don't have to worry about that. But if these companies offer financing, and that's how we compared it to when we bought the greater. Whoever's, whoever's talking, can you either stop talking or mute yourself, please? That's that's in the. Um, it's outside, Peter. It's not on a mute. Um, okay. So, um, but yes, it was when I inquired, I'm trying to think what I inquired about before, but she said, oh, I was talking about renewing our line of credit. And she said it definitely wouldn't renew at the rate that we've got now. Mm -hmm. The manufacturer um, may have something. They, they might have programs too. Yeah. Yeah. Program. yeah. Yeah. This is this is this is amortized on a monthly basis, but that's fifteen twenty times twelve. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I can inquire. So it would be the principal, you like, would divide that by fifteen years and then whatever yeah. that payment is for yeah. the twenty twenty K. Yeah, twenty K. Yeah. At six percent. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any other questions or comments about Article Seven and the purchase of a new excavator? Well, yes. I'd just like to have it on the record that clearly we need this excavator. It's an important piece of equipment for the town, and it's very important for us to go ahead with that. This isn't some frivolous purchase. We've carefully thought about it. We certainly. When we made the decision to buy our first excavator, our last excavator, there was some question about whether we use it, we would use it or not. And I think the answer is we've worn the poor thing out using it. So there was, there was no question that we uh, that we've used it and gotten good value out of it. Okay, did you get that, Sarah? He wants for the yeah. record. He Peter just wants for the record that um, that this that we really do need this excavator, and um, we're hoping that the town will be supportive. And I, yes, you had another comment. You yeah. had the, you figured that uh, what the payment might close. Yeah, like around twenty thousand. Twenty thousand a year. Right? Yeah, a year. Yeah. yeah. So it would yeah. be twenty thousand dollars. Approximately, okay. <laughs> at a six percent interest rate. Right. Yes, Randy. Um, just thinking about getting stuff out there in the meeting for That's those. That's one hundred eighty thousand, by the way. For those who might watch this recording, um, I think it'd be good for folks to know as well um, if we have an estimated cost for. Um, any types of repairs that are currently necessary. I know the undercarriage is worn. I can get um, one. I, I think that that's going to be a useful piece of information um, for folks, um, just so that they know way the the new cost versus what it would take to repair this one to a point where we're comfortable and feel like it would be reliable enough. So, if we had an idea of what an undercarriage replacement cost would be, um, and I don't know what other issues there may you may be having with it right now, but it sounds like most of it's undercarriage. The major part of it is that, I mean, there's other issues that's not as 
front line. But. Yeah. So I, th I think that if we had that information for town meeting, that'd be good information. And, and just a ballpark, you know, an, an estimate from somebody to say, you know, in this range. Okay. Sarah has a question of clarity. How much did we spend to rent? How, did, how much did we pay to rent that thing last fall? You know, off the top of the Five thousand a month. Five thousand a month? Yes. And how many months did you rent it for? I think it was only a month. A month or two. A month Maybe or two. two. I think it was a two. month, wasn't it, Eric? I think it a month, like only a month. Over a month? I think I think so. I think it was right. only a month. All right. What's that? I think it was only a month. Right. Okay. Are there any other questions about the excavator in Article Seven? <laughs> All righty. Then, if there are no other questions, we'll adjourn the meeting at five twenty-two. We'll take a break until 5.30, and just so you know, guests who are here will resume a new meeting at 5.30 for um, the vicious dog hearing, so. Recording in progress. Alrighty, it is 5.30 p.m. Um, in the Middlesex Select Board special meeting um, for a vicious dog hearing. Um, so we're going to call the meeting to order. We're going to welcome the guests. Sarah just collected your names. Um, when it's time for you to speak, I'll ask you to repeat your name um, for the record. That would be helpful. Um, and just to understand, we don't do these hearings very often, which is a good thing. Um, so we're all a little rusty on the procedures, but Sarah has presented us with a very um, detailed list of how this meeting will be run. So I'm going to follow it very, um, very detailed. So it, it should run pretty smoothly. But just so you know, I can't remember the last time that we did this. Um, and for some of this, some of us in the meeting, this is the first time. Um, it's our last time, right? right. OK. Um, and so if um, you are um, called upon to speak or if you have a question and say, oh, I want to clarify something, you'll address me, the chair. My name's Liz. Um, and so when you're talking, you're talking to the chair, um, to, to, to me and the select board, not to the people involved within the, within the meeting. Um, so um, let's see. I think that kind of take that that covers our um, housekeeping. Sarah, is there anything else around housekeeping that I want to say besides before we start before we go in in terms of communication and stuff? I think just letting people know what what the procedure is. I mean, everybody yeah. got Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll go through that. So um, so the the first part of this so this this that you have here is the is the procedure and we're going to literally go through them step by step so everyone who's involved gets an opportunity to speak. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is actually read um, the the hearing the public notice. Um, and it says here, public notice Middlesex Select Board special meeting. A special meeting of the Middlesex Select Board will be held at 5.30 p.m. Thursday, February 29th, 2024, in Middlesex Town Hall to conduct a vicious dog hearing regarding an alleged dog attack on French Road that occurred on February 23rd, 2024. This person may be attended in person or via Zoom. Okay. So all of us who are present, either in person or in Zoom, are reminded that this hearing is mandated by state law, um, and that's 20 um, VSA Statute 3546. This hearing will be conducted in an orderly manner, and all statements must be directed to the chair or vice chair, who is me, if she is chairing. So that's me. So that's when I said, rather than talking to the people in the meeting, you talk to the, the chair. Um, so the next step is I'm going to ask the complainant, who is um, Deb Lind, if she has any questions about the hearing. No. No. Okay. Um, the next um, is to disclose of conflicts of interest by the select board. Is there anyone here who has a conflict of interest um, with either parties um, or the dogs themselves? Okay, no conflict of interest. Okay. Um, I will state that Deb is a neighbor and lives on my road. 
but I think because this is Middlesex, that isn't considered a conflict of, of interest, unless someone else thinks it is. Okay. Um, okay, so the complainant, who again is Deb Lind, um, and her representative, and all others providing evidence, is that that everyone in the room, including the dog owner, Sarah, that do, do the oath? If, if any of these guys is going to, if, if you guys are going to talk, yeah, so we're going to take the oath. So um, you are going to take the following oath, and you're going to read it aloud. Does anyone need help with reading this aloud? I think uh, also Dr. Penny and, and Eric have the Okay, well, also, yeah. so Dr. Penny and Erica, if you could also read the following oath, do you have it? Um, uh, and you'll say it aloud. I hereby, I hereby solemnly swear, swear or affirm that the evidence I, I give in the cause under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Okay, thank you. So the next step is to accept written information from complainant presented to the select board. And so that is the town of Middlesex vicious dog complaint form, as well as a letter that um, was submitted um, to describe the situation. Um, okay. So has everyone had a chance to read through this? Do you want to take a few minutes to read through this? Okay. I haven't read that. You have not read this? No, no. those complaints, no, we've not read that. Okay. Um, we trust you're the truth. Well, I want to read them into yeah, I'll, why don't I read it aloud, okay? So this is from Deborah Lind. She lives at 325 Culver Hill Road. Um, this was on 2-23-2024. Um, and the place of attack was 99 French Road in Middlesex. Um, the person who was bitten, who is Deb, did require medical attention. That was circled, yes, she required medical attention. Um, and we know that the property owner was Richard Fryat. Am I pronouncing that yeah, correctly? Fryat. Fryat, okay. Um, and in, in a, uh, let's see, okay. Uh, Deb was walking her dog, Arrow is the name of the dog, as she does most every day by this location. Dogs always bark and sometimes follow, but never attacked. This day they attacked Arrow and Deb was caught in the fray. Um, three dogs attacked Arrow. Brown pit bull type, white with black spot on face, pit bull type, name Sunshine. Black skinny dog, name Otto. They pinned him down, pinned down Arrow, while growling, barking, and biting. Owner of dogs, I assume, came out. He started kicking, yelling, and beating the dogs. He was hitting them with something on a cord. I don't know what. They paid no attention to him. We were both trying to separate them. After I got Arrow free, after 10 to 15 minutes, he ran down the road. I was bleeding a lot from hands and arm. I started to walk and the man yelled, stop walking. I kept, not, I kept going, not realizing what he meant. He yelled the same thing again. I stopped and stated that I was going to find my dog. He then said that if I kept walking, the dogs would follow. So I stood in the road for another five minutes while he corralled his three dogs. I walked the mile home. Arrow had run home. Okay. Um, so you will have an opportunity to ask some questions because we're going to follow along. Um, so now is an opportunity, Deb, as a complainant, to present oral testimony. Would you like to share? This is for. That's, that's about it in a nutshell. Okay. Um, you know, I walked by there. As I said, I've walked by there for the past year. I, you know, I go by one way and come back this way. The dogs bark. I've even given a, you know, thrown a couple of treats, and they they weren't too interested, but they were not aggressive. You know, um, a couple times 
they followed, but they're again not chased. And I, you know, so I that day I was just. Era was not on a leash at that time. The leash was in my hand. Um, Arrow comes whenever I call, so sometimes I'd let him off the leash just to get his yaya out. Uh, sometimes when we go by your house, he's on a leash. Sometimes he's not. So you know, I'll be honest mm -hmm. about that. He was not that day, and so I do. I honestly do not know what precipitated the dogs to feel. They had to be aggressive that day. I, I do not know because they had not been before, and and I don't know these people personally. But I always wave and speak, and mm -hmm. you know, it's like it's it's it's. I feel I feel. I feel awful. I'm upset. I'm angry, but I'm not. What well, you know? It happens. Shit happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know why it happened that day. I. You know, um, but if they are going to be aggressive, I think they need to, you know, to somehow be uh, at least kept on their property somehow because they came into the road. Arrow did not go on their land; they came into the road, and which they always do. Okay. And I didn't know at that time that other people had complaints um, about them, people jogging. And because of bacteria, I guess, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm sure th that all the dogs were biting, but these dogs precipitated. You know, my dog was on its back, and these dogs were on top of my dog. Okay. I guess, I'm, you know. Okay. So. Say, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. So the next opportunity, yeah, Deb, is, is yep. This is his jacket that he had on, which I, oh, okay. which I think helped, actually. And here are some pictures of Deb's um, dog bites. <coughs> so this was one hand. You can pass them around. Okay. And I tell you, if anybody's to say Velcro doesn't work, I beg to differ. Because yeah. this was, this is a jacket, he had on, which is just for so we can, you know, cars can see him and I can see him. But this thing was being pulled and pulled and pulled and, it went and pulled by these dogs, and it never, never came up. I can't believe it. You know, Velcro usually will give this. It, it, he would have been better off if it, had, if it had come off, and he could have escaped, mm -hmm. probably. But so there's yeah, there's holes, and yeah, I think just, probably okay. this helped keep Errol from getting more hurt. He has a puncture behind his ear, which was treated by the vet, uh, but it's clean and doing well. Okay. So next is the opportunity for the select board to ask you any further questions, Deb. No, if we, if the select board members have any further questions for the complainant, Deb, about her experience. I don't have any questions. Okay, Randy? Not yet. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that the jacket was, had some holes in it. Yeah. Did that occur through this event? Yes, completely, yeah. Um, I think the only other, the only other question that I, I might have is, um, uh, you stated that you were out in the roadway? Yes. And the dog never went onto the property? No. Um, were you up against the property line on that side or uh, out probably. in the middle of the road? Or? Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. Like that's okay. the only question. I have one question, um, Deb. Um, oh, God. I don't remember what it is. <laughs> I, I do. I, I'll remember in a second. Um, 
Does anyone else have any questions on the board, Jeff or Peter? No more questions from me. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me just think if I can remember this. Uh, yeah, I might come back to it. The dog, your dog was off the leash. Yep. And, um, oh, I know what it was. In your attempt to remove your dog from the fight, um, were the dogs just biting willy-nilly, or did were they literally attacking you, like, deliberately? No, they weren't attacking me, per se. Yeah. I was trying to free the dogs, as was this gentleman. And it was just the bites got up. And yeah, we they ended get... up on the other side of the road yep. because Arrow was trying to run away. Okay. And and those dogs chased him. We ended up by the mailbox on the other side of the road down in the... Okay. And was, was your, um, did your insurance cover the dog bites? As far as I know. As far as you know. As far okay. as I know. <laughs> okay, so are there any other questions from the select board about this, about Deb's experience? Okay. All right, so then the next thing that we do is the owner of the dog or dogs alleged to be involved in the attack or the owner's representatives are invited to respond to the evidence presented by Deb. So who owns these dogs? The three of us. The three of you own the dogs, yes. okay. And you all live at? Yes, and I, I was involved in it. Okay. Um, so why don't you explain what happened on that day when um, um, Deb was walking her dog? Deb was walking her dog's by, like she says, she has many times, it's never been a problem. Uh, for whatever reason, I did notice she did not have it on the leash. As we were fighting the dogs, I noticed that. But Autumn ran up our her, she ran walk by, Autumn ran up the driveway barking because she's a mouthy dog, so all she does is bark. Um, and then her dog growled and, and went towards Autumn at the end of the driveway, and that's when the other two dogs became protective and come running up the driveway. I tried to stop it. I also got bit twice on the arm. I have pictures I can show you on my phone. Um, I believe it was by her dog at that time I had my two dogs by the, by the throats under my arms. And it, it did. Once again, the dog didn't bite me knowing it was biting me. Mm -hmm. They were just trying to get away. And like she said, once I did, my dog, Sunshine, slipped her collar. I could have had her by the collar at first. So uh, I was beating her with the collar right on the head, telling her to let the other damn dog go. Okay. And, uh, and then I grabbed him, when I grabbed them both by that, that's when I received a bite on my, on my wrist and another one up here on my arm. Um, I did not seek medical attention because you're gonna, you're gonna get a dog fight, you're gonna get bit, as far as I'm concerned. But, I said, the only thing I noticed that was different that day was her dog was not on the leash, and it lunged towards Autumn, Autumn yelped, and that triggered the other two dogs to come up the driveway. Um, we since then now no longer let all three dogs out at one time, because we don't want this happening. Um, and they're under 10 day quarantine. And, um, and That's because two of them not have rabies shots because they've not reached that part in their life yet. My, my vet told me not to, they were a year old, they're not a year old yet. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. It was an accident that happened. Um, I think it was a mutual thing between the dogs for some strange reason that particular day. We, I, I got the dogs down and I got them finally off her dog. Her dog took off running down the road and I knew it was safe. I still have her dogs for a minute. And then as she was trying to walk off, I did have to tell her twice, please stop so I can get my dogs under control. They're going to follow you if you walk off. And then she did stop. I got my dogs down the house. I calmed myself down for about an hour or so, took care of my wounds. Then I went down and found, located her house to make sure she was all right, but she was apparently already gone at that time. Um, because I did want to make sure she and her dog were all right. But um, something that shouldn't have happened, my dogs are not vicious. One of the board members here has seen my dogs, oh. met my dogs. Um, the health inspector met our dogs, saw our dogs. And those are not vicious dogs, in no way. Uh, my five-year-old was climbing on them today. Um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much it, what happened. 
Okay, so now at this moment, the select board members, so there's three of us here and then there's two on the TV, um, have an opportunity to ask you some questions. Okay. Are there any questions from the select board? No, Okay, Vic does not have a question. Randy, do you have a question or do you want to think about it? I, yeah, I'd like to just think for a minute Okay. Here. Peter Hood, you have a question, yes. I just have one question. So uh, my understanding is that none of the three dogs were registered for the town of Middlesex, is that correct? Yeah. No, they're not because I thought I couldn't register mine until she got a rabies shot. Where she gets in a month and a half when she turns a year old. Okay. Right, so so two of the dogs weren't yet a year old. Is that right. true? Right. Okay. And the dog that was over a year old did in fact have a rabies shot? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Do you want to see the picture from my wounds? Sure. Jeff, do you have any questions right now? Yeah, I, I do have a couple questions for, well, I guess, all of the owners. Um, it was mentioned that you all aren't letting all three of them out at once, but are you doing something to keep them out of the road in the future? Yes, we don't allow all three of them out at a time, and one of us is out there with them at all times now. And we are looking into the uh, possibly getting one of those um, invisible fences to put around the property. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's my rest. Okay. He's sharing pictures of the dog bites on his arms. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes. That's an opportunity to ask our other questions down here after you get this. Um, Yes, okay. so like there would be more, yes, okay. yep, yep. Um, so let's see, Does you don't have any questions right now for? I, I don't think so. For them, okay. Um, I don't think I have any questions either. Um, I guess one question I, I have is, because I also walk by there sometimes, are there only three dogs all the time, or is this new? Like I've never, I, I'm, it's never clear to me how many dogs live there. For the last eight months. Yeah. Okay, but has there's always been a little beagle or something there's that lived there. There's a little dog that stays inside, only goes out to use the bathroom, and it goes back in. Okay, so these are three dogs that sort of joined all at the same time, more or less, or in the last eight months they've become Dol a pack. Dozer's uh, seven years old. He's the older one. And uh, Autumn's a rescue dog. Uh, Autumn's a rescue, and she'll be a year old like next month. Okay. What did you say the other dog's name was? Dozer? Dozer. And Dozer is the is the skinny dog? No, he's the big, big dog. Brown one. Okay, so I had Autumn Sunshine. And Dozer. That's Autumn. Who's Otto? I didn't know the name of the other one. Oh, Autumn. Autumn. Okay, Autumn. 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 Gotcha. So okay, and Dozer. So, I'm sorry. Dozer. Gotcha. Autumn or Autumn? Autumn. Okay. Yep. Autumn. Autumn, Sunshine, and Dozer. Okay. And all three dogs, which one is the Dotson? So there's actually four dogs that yeah, live there. She never, she Skittles. would never make it up there, yeah. But there, there are four dogs in the house. Yeah. Okay. Skittles. Okay. She's got her shots, too. Okay, so Skittles and is the fourth that doesn't go outside. Yeah. Okay. And is Skittles uh, registered? She's not registered as a town. Okay. She's got all vaccinated from bear 12. Okay. So um, just as a side note, every year you should register your dogs with the town. And um, how much does the registration cost? Now? That's. Are they fixed? Are they? Uh, Dozer is, and the uh, autumn's going to be. Okay. So, sorry, so how much is it, Sarah? Nine bucks for fixed, thirteen for not fixed. Okay. Yeah. Nine for fixed, thirteen for not fixed. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so the next thing is members of the public, and we have a couple of members of the public here. We have Erica and we have Dr. Penny, okay, um, who have been involved in this um, situation. So you are invited um, to present any relevant information regarding this complaint. Do either of you have something that you'd like to share? Yes. Okay. 
Erica? Um, so I received the phone call from... And just, sorry, introduce yourself to yes, the... Yes, sorry. So Erica Holm, um, I am the town's animal control officer, um, and I received the call from Deb um, within minutes after the uh, occurrence. So um, a couple things I did want to clear up, not specific to the incident, but um, it's state law that your dogs are vaccinated for rabies at age 12 weeks and older. So I... They get puppy shots. Then you got to get them at a year. Yep. That told me a year. So that's what I was going to do. If your vet is Paul Alferone, he knows that at no, 12... I, I use Randolph. So you need to vaccinate your dog. It's state law. At 12 weeks, they get a rabies shot. It's good for one year. They get that within the second shot within a year, and then it's good for three years, and then you need to continue it. But you don't wait until they're one year old. It's a state law. Um, so you need to get those dogs vaccinated right now. Um, so for, I just wanted to make sure you're clear on that, and that your other dogs have been vaccinated, so there's no reason they shouldn't be licensed with the town. Um, one of the reasons, uh, there's many reasons to license, but also one of them is so that when I find a stray dog, I'm able to figure out who the owners are. And dogs list. Chip and okay, Erica, sorry, you should be talking to me. Whoops. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, that's just another reason why they should be um, registered with the town, besides the fact that it's, it's part of the uh, requirement by the state. The dog ordinance does specify that um, our leash law allows a dog to be off a physical leash in control of their owners by voice. Arrow is in Deb's control. Your dog's running out into the road, the public road off your property, or off the owner's property, um, is a violation. That's not in control. So just to clarify that the fact that Arrow was not on a physical leash is not a violation of our dog ordinance. Um, keeping your dogs on, on your property is, is what needs to happen. Um, I would like to say, um, as a select board considers uh, solutions to this, that uh, an electric invisible fence is not a good solution. So especially with dogs that have reactivity and aggression toward other dogs and people, from what we have heard from joggers, bicyclists, and walkers, an invisible fence, which will shock them when they attempt to go to those people or other dogs, is an aversive training method that actually makes dogs more aggressive. So it's not a great system, especially in this and I have had an invisible fence, underground fence for my own dogs in the past. Um, and I do a lot of dog training. So I would recommend that the select board does not consider that um, a viable containment system for the public safety because it will make the dogs more aggressive and it really will not prevent them from going after people. If they want to, they're gonna go through it. Um, you, need a, you need a physical fence. Um, for these dogs. And there's all, all kinds of options for physical fence, even in this weather, to be you know, installed that they're not gonna necessarily go under. Your dachshund's more likely to dig under a fence than these three. She's more likely to three. jump off the porch, go to the bathroom, go back in the house. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, just make sure that you're addressing. So, from my perspective, what I would recommend is that there is a you know, containment system for the dogs that is not a, a shock. Um, it is a physical containment to protect the public and from keeping these folks going, these dogs going out into the road. Um, and in the meantime, it's great that you're not letting them out together because that does tend to sort of inspire them to act like, you know, a bratty group of dogs. Um, but during this 10 day quarantine, you have to actually have them on a leash when you're outside. We cannot risk having them disappear um, because they need to be observed at the end of the 10 day quarantine to make sure they're not showing any signs of neurological deficit, especially considering a couple of these dogs have no vaccine history whatsoever. Um, so they have no protection from rabies 
if they've been bitten by any wildlife. So not that we don't have a huge rabies risk of domestic dogs in the state. Do I believe these dogs have rabies? No. But to fulfill our obligation to them um, and to the public, you can't risk them going outside to, and running away. So please have them make sure they're on a leash until the 10 day quarantine is up. It's only a few more days. Okay, and um, I, why don't I then, Dr. Penny, if you have anything that you want to add, and then we can ask questions of the two of you. Is that Okay, um, Rob Penny, I'm the town health officer. Um, I just um, met with Mr. Dwyer at the, at the uh, house location a few days ago to deliver notice of this meeting. It went well. Um, the owner was there. He hadn't been he'd been away for a while. Um, the dogs came out and sniffed around, but were not aggressive at all while we were there. And uh, just reinforced that they needed to be uh, confined and observed for ten days following the uh, incident. Okay. That's all we got. Are the dogs um, at your house? Where are they right now? Yeah, at the house. Okay, they're at the house. Okay. Inside. No. Is there anything else, Dr. Penny, that you want to add? Okay. So now there's an opportunity for the select board, once again, to ask more questions or um, make comments. Yes, Randy. I just. Uh, hearing the two different stories, I guess I just have a question for Deb. Actually, you should ask me in that. Uh, sorry, I have a question for Deb. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I think the only, the, the stories seem to align with each other, um, except for um, I heard uh, a reference to her dog growling and lunging at uh, the dogs at the property. And I guess the question is, uh, did she happen to observe that as well? Okay. Did you hear that, Deb? Yeah. Yes, I did. No, I, I honestly I didn't, but I, dogs always, and these dogs have all sniffed, uh, you know, touched noses, sniffed their butts. They, they've all done this stuff before. And uh, no, in answer to your question, I did not observe it, but it, that's what dogs do, and it could have happened. Yes, Randy. Uh, in her typical walks, um, I'm wondering if uh, traditionally there is a dog out and maybe not the full pack of dogs. I'm just wondering what the normal conditions have been previous prior to this. With my dog, with other dogs? Uh, specifically walking by this location. Oh. Like, will all three dogs be out at once? Is that a common occurrence, or is it usually one yeah, dog? It's or... a fairly common occurrence. Okay. But, you know, they've, um, like I said, they've met, they've sniffed up in the road. Um, I even offered them treats. So something first, triggered something, it sounds like. Something triggered something that yeah. day. That day, yeah. I mean, these dogs were never, I wouldn't say friendly. They didn't want me to. You know, I put my hand down, they didn't want anything to do with me, but they weren't aggressive. They would turn and go away. You know, I don't know what happened that day. That's all um, I have. Are we allowed to ask Sarah, if <laughs> you know the answer, about the other instances with this dog? Because when we're making this decision, we also have to think that there were other people who have made complaints about these dogs. Well, we've received one complaint, and that was from Heather, that we that we read at the February 6th meeting, but that's the only written complaint I've received. Maybe Eric has received others. Heather Collier? No, Heather no I did from Heather. Okay. Heather. And what was that? I, I can't remember what that complaint was. Uh, she said that she was um, she was running on the road and she, and she felt that the dogs were, I can just dig it up again, but she, she felt that the dogs were, they, they had bitten her, but she felt like they were, they, they were running after her. She was scared. They were being chased while running. She was running. Okay. She was running. She wanted a place to run. So there's Deb. Yes, Deb. Yes, Deb. Um, 
I ran into, I don't know if I'm supposed to give this person's name, but well, it was John McDougall. Okay. People in town know John McDougall. He's, he stopped to talk to me after he knew about the incident when I was walking with Errol uh, a day or two later, and he said that before this incident one day, the week prior, he was driving down French Road, like toward, toward Culvert, and I don't, I don't even remember, John told me which dog, but one of the dogs was bothering someone who was jogging, and she was tr trying to get away from him, and John drove his car in between the dog and the, first didn't hit, I mean, he just, he encouraged the dog and hollered the dog, and then the dog went home. So, that's all. Erica, oh, I'll get to you in a minute. Um, are these, what, what are the breeds called? Mixed breed or something for these dogs? Well, I mean, yeah, they're not purebred. I mean, if they, I mean, I haven't seen them, but they're, they're, everybody's they're, they're mixed dogs. description is they're is a mixed. fully breeds. So, I mean, that's okay. it's kind of irrelevant. Okay. And I can tell you, um, Heather had reached out to me and uh, one other person. They were supposed to, I had referred them to put their concerns in writing uh, to Sarah so that we could send a letter because at the time we didn't know um, for sure who owns the dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and also early on uh, with the complaints I had received, there was different descriptions of the dogs each time. Now I understand, you know, whether there was two out or three, or, mm -hmm. um, and also nobody was giving me a clear address of the home, so that was another reason I wasn't um, able to do anything from the original complaints. But okay, Jeffrey, do you have a question or comment? Oh. For Erica, on what you just explained about the the complaint, the past complaint, I recall a month, two ago, we feel that that Heather Collier um, letter. It wasn't Collier, but sorry. My recollection was that we didn't recall what address that was, so we didn't take any action. But Erica, are you saying that you were involved with her on that separately? It's Heather McLean. It's Heather McLean, to clarify, not Heather Collier. So okay, Heather my bad. Sorry. So Heather had contacted me and Sarah had, and I had with her and Lauren Gould, was the Lauren Gould. other party, and they were going to um, submit their concerns in writing to Sarah so then we could get the letter sent to the address, still not knowing who that was. Right. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I understand, thank you. Okay. Peter, do you have comments or questions? No, I'm all I'm all set. I just uh, you know I I have a lot of faith in our uh, in our dog officer, and I think we should pay attention to her recommendation. <laughs> Recommendations. Okay. Um, so we now is an opportunity for um, the complainant Deb or the dog owners. Um, to make any final comments. Yes, could you restate your name again? Uh, Ron Hemingway. Okay, yes, Ron. And uh, I'm 99% uh, keep care of them dogs, like, you know, when they go in and out. And I am breaking sunshine. That's the, the little pit bull mix. She's 10 months old. She keeps running up after the joggers. I know this incident that you just said about the six. Because I had to go up there. She ain't gonna bite him, but She's just gonna keep chasing them. She won't shut, you know, I'm trying to break her of that. And I got them fairly broke, but I went- What do you mean by break? Not go up there, leave them alone. They, they see them go by. Break the habit. Okay. Yeah, just stop her from doing that, barking at people. Okay. Yeah. Are you in, are you taking any lessons on dog training? I raised blue tick hounds for coon I, oh. I know how to keep okay. care of dogs. Okay. And them dogs, as Deb said, They've all smiled. My dogs go up the side of the road and other dogs come. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened that day. I mm -hmm. really don't, but it's never ever happened before. And the puppies do chase the joggers now and again. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I'm trying to stop her, not break her, but stop her from that. Okay. You know? 
And uh, I was in Arizona for three weeks. So I dumped, dumped this mess onto these guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I am sorry. Um, Erica, is there also, so I just, I, I guess I just want to make a statement about dogs in general and packs and just my own experience with dogs and I've had my fair share in my own personal life of having dogs that have had problems. Um, so I also know that dogs um, change as they grow and mature and as a new dog gets added into a pack or another dog leaves, um, you can, you know, one year your dog may be the friendliest, nicest dog, and the next year with a different, or they've grown up, they've matured more, they, their personalities change, or dog personalities change. Um, and I'm wondering, Erica, if um, that's something, you know, that we need to consider when we're thinking about a pack of dogs and how a pack of dogs um, living in a community can be a problem for the people who live in a community and what are some considerations that we as a board when we're deliberating about this should think about when we're thinking about this as a pack of of dogs dogs definitely behave differently when there is more than one um, not only the dynamics in their home but when they get into a situation as um, I think Ron described it, that you know the uh, one dog Autumn uh, felt that Arrow growled at her. She yelped, and her friends came running to help. Right, so you know we see this behavior all the time. Even dog days at the pool in Montpelier for the Humane Society. If a fight between two dogs break out, every other dog in that pool comes running. Some of them to join in. Some of them to police it. Um, but their behavior is very different than what they would, how they would behave when they're alone. Um, and so the more animals you add into this, the more you increase, you know, the, the chances that there's going to be misbehavior and more of a sense of protecting their space and their property and not understanding their, their boundaries. I mean, these are young. That's, that's the only the, the know that and I know that right what, what yeah you should you should talk to them we'll start and yeah. just raise your hand and, if you want to talk. And I mean they are young dogs and they're still learning um you know your your language when you talk about breaking a dog is a very different uh training style than what I believe in um but you know the reality is is as they age they will change and potentially become more invested in wanting to you know mark their territory um, and as I spoke against aversive training with a fence it's the same sort of thing that you know if a dog is going to be um, beaten when they have done something they shouldn't do that that suppresses the behavior it doesn't change mm -hmm. the behavior and, and encourage them to do what's right um, I understand in the moment you know um, hitting the, the dog with their collar um, in, I mean, I hit my dog over the head with my cell phone when he had my pig's ear in his mouth a couple years ago, you know? You're trying to get them off of another animal. Um, but I do understand there was also some language afterwards saying as they were going in the house, they were going to get the worst beating of their life. You know, that can also be an expression in the heat of the moment, but um, I would recommend that you, uh, the training is, is not done in such a way that is quote unquote breaking an animal. Um, and I mean, personally, I just feel there isn't, uh, you can't, no dog has 100% recall. They just don't. And especially when you are having them out in groups like this, and it's much more fun and exciting for them to run out into the road and harass people than it is to stay in their own yard. Um, you know, they either need to have a physical containment system when we've already seen behavior from them that is not safe for the public. Um, do either Erica or Dr. Penny, did you find that the dogs appeared to be in good health and properly nourished? Um, 
I would say so. Okay. You know, it was a brief encounter. Yep. So, you know, five, <laughs> ten minutes. Yeah, they would tell I haven't seen them, but uh, Dick also has good experience with dogs. Yeah, uh, the one, the brown dog was uh, very well fed. Okay. <laughs> Dozer. Okay. Dozer. Um, all right, so are there any other final comments from either Deb or the dog owners or the public for that matter? No? Okay. So the next thing that happens, um, we have to make a motion and have a majority approval um, to either adjourn the hearing to a time and date certain to obtain additional evidence if we feel that's necessary, or close the proceedings by stating that this is the final public hearing on the matter. Is there a motion for either one? I make a motion that it's the final public okay. hearing. Okay. So Vic has made a motion that this is the final public hearing on the matter. Is there a second? Peter? I'll second. Okay. You, Peter. Peter has seconded. Okay. Um, is there any other motion? No. Okay. So all those in favor of this motion to have this be the final public hearing, say aye on the select board. Aye. 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 Everyone said aye, Sarah. Okay, so now the next thing that happens is the select board has a choice. We, we are going to do del deliberations. So this is where we sit together as a select board and we decide what the next steps are for this situation. So we can either do it in public, meaning you guys can stay here, or um, we can do it, this normally, this is a special thing for dogs, just so you know, for this, this particular type of vicious dog hearing. Um, um, or enter deliberative session, so that's without you, um, in which case the written decision of the select board setting forth its findings of facts, conclusion of law, and order for the domestic pet will be rendered in writing to the owner of the dog, sent by certified mail, return receipt requested within 10 days. Um, so is there, do we make a motion about that, Sarah? That we either do it public or, yeah. okay. So if we do it in private, can we invite like the animal control officer to be a part of that yeah, meeting? Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay, so is there a motion for that? Is there a motion to either do it in public or in private deliberations? And in, and in private, we can request the presence of anyone, like the public animal officer or the health officer. Yes, Jeffrey. I move for the deliberative session with Erica Bradley. Okay. Um, is there um, a second on that? Okay, a second. Who second? Uh, Vic did. Okay. okay. Um, is there any other person that you would like to have present, Dr. Penny? No, just Erica? Aye. Okay. All right, so um, all those in favor of having a private deliberation, so that means that you would go home and we would present to you um, in writing to the owner of the dog by certified mail within 10 days a response. Um, so all those in favor of having a private deliberation with Erica present, say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. So we're adjourning um, the meeting to have deliberations, right, Sarah? It's a adjourning of this meeting and then we go into a, yeah, adjourning of the public hearing. Okay, so we're adjourning the public hearing.